job and Liz Truss is battling market chaos, soaring interest rates, plummeting poll ratings and Conservative Party civil war. She said these were stormy days, but many of her own MPs are saying she made the weather. In these tough times, we need to step up. I'm determined to get Britain moving, to get us through the tempest and to put us on a stronger footing as a nation. Liz Truss proclaimed herself a fighter, toughened by people dismissing her talents repeatedly. I remember as a young girl being presented on a plane with a junior air hostess badge. Meanwhile, my brothers were given junior pilot badges. <laughs> it wasn't the only time in my life that I've been treated differently for being female or for not fitting in. It made me angry and it made me determined. She signalled that the anti-obesity strategy currently under review could soon be dropped. I'm not interested in how many two-for-one offers you buy at the supermarket or how you spend your spare time or in virtue signalling. I'm not interested in just talking about things but actually in doing things. Just as Liz Truss was praising the government's energy price guarantee, some anti-fracking protesters interrupted. And that's why I promised on entering Downing Street to act. Let's get them removed. Party members jeered them out. But Liz Truss then addressed the chaos that followed her budget two weeks ago trying to explain to voters beyond the hall why it was necessary. As the last few weeks have shown, it will be difficult. Whenever there's change, there is disruption. Opinion polls suggest the voters are far from convinced. Former Tory voters appearing to desert the Tories in their millions in the two weeks since the mini-budget. And not everybody will be in favour of change, but everyone will benefit from the results. As she spoke, the average two-year fixed-rate mortgage reached 6%. Liz Truss also had a message for traders. Despite borrowing billions for tax cut, the government was fiscally responsible. And, although her government's questioned the Bank of England's judgment, it would allow it to act independently. It's right that interest rates are independently set by the Bank of England and that politicians do not decide on this. The Chancellor and the Governor will keep closely coordinating our monetary and fiscal policy. And the Chancellor and I are in complete lockstep on this. She knows rumours have swirled of differences between the two and even suggestions she might sack him after only a month in office. I have three priorities for our economy. Growth, growth and growth. But, Liz Truss warned, there were enemies of growth lurking everywhere. I will not allow the anti-growth coalition to hold us back. <laughs> Labour, the Lib Dems, the SNP, the militant unions, the vested interests dressed up as think tanks, the talking heads, the Brexit deniers, Extinction Rebellion and some of the people we had in the hall earlier. <laughs> From broadcast to podcast, they peddle the same old answers. It's always more taxes, more regulation, and more meddling. Wrong, wrong, wrong. In the middle of that list, what sounded like a preemptive strike against the think tanks who question whether we her policies will bring up. growth. She spoke in a smaller than usual hall, but still not all the seats were filled as she adapted one of Margaret Thatcher's most famous phrases. This mission will be difficult, but it is necessary. We have no alternative. Cheering her on, the members who voted her in. Back in Westminster, many Tory MPs think that was a colossal mistake. 
Liz Truss hopes to rein in MPs thinking of voting against her measures with a threat to remove the whip. But it's not clear if she can shore up her authority with them, with the city or with the voters. Gary Gibbon, Channel 4 News at the Conservative Party conference in Birmingham. Well, earlier I spoke to the Cabinet Office Minister and Paymaster General, Edward Arger. I put it to him that the conference hadn't really gone brilliantly. That was a fantastic speech from the Prime Minister. Focused, high energy. She set out very clearly the hopes and fears that I'm getting expressed to me by my constituents. And crucially, she set out a clear plan to address those challenges we face. And it, this being Liz, a clear focus on delivering that plan. OK, well, I mean, there wasn't any new policy, so let's just go through some of the things she did say. Why did she say she was the first Prime Minister to go to a comprehensive school? Well, because I think she was the first Prime Minister to go to a... Com first Conservative Prime Minister to go to a comprehensive school. No, no, she wasn't. Theresa May went to a comprehensive school as well. Uh, my understanding is that the school changed status while she was there. Yeah. So she went to a comprehensive school, is the point. So it was not correct so, to say, I am no, the first Prime Minister Krishnan. who went to a comprehensive school... Krishnan, I think the Prime Minister has been very clear. She went to a comprehensive school. She spent her entire time at secondary school at a comprehensive yeah. school. That's what the Prime Minister is trying to um, make clear and get across. She also talked about vested interests dressed as think tanks. Did she mean the Institute for Economic Affairs? No, I think what the Prime Minister was talking about there was that the vast majority of the people in this country are concerned about what can be done to grow our economy, to fund public services, and that there are think tanks, there are a whole range of organisations who legitimately have their own perspective and push that perspective. Well, she had a big go at the anti-growth coalition, but isn't the truth that, you know, because of Brexit, British growth is much lower than it would have been? It is you, well, what... this government, who are the anti-growth coalition. Well, two things, Christian, if I may. Firstly, since... Brexit. We have seen huge global upheaval. We've seen a global pandemic which has had a massive impact on economies around the world. We've also seen war in Europe, which has again had a devastating impact yeah. in terms of oil prices, but if you just energy concentrate prices on Brexit. and so on. So concentrating on what the Prime Minister said, yeah. what she's saying is we need to be focused on delivering growth and that means driving forward enterprise, driving forward um, investment and supporting businesses to deliver that growth. As you know, the two big rows at this conference were about the 45p rate of tax and now whether benefits will be uprated by the rate of inflation. Would it be fair to cut taxes for the wealthy while cutting benefits for the poor? You've mentioned the 45 pence um, tax rate. That was about, I think, about 5% of this overall package of measures, let's focus on what this overall package does, which is delivers growth in this country for everyone, which helps fund benefits, which helps fund our vital public services. And let's not preempt that review, which is a statutory review, which will take place as it normally would. Um, you'll have seen the word clouds that have been done by James Johnson partners about Liz Truss and Keir Starmer. The biggest word on his word cloud is boring. The biggest word cloud on hers, the biggest name on her word cloud is incompetent. Would you rather be boring or incompetent? My experience of working with Liz Truss and her track record speaks for itself is she delivers. We've seen it with trade deals, we've seen it throughout her career. That's what matters. That's what, if you wanted me to characterise my Prime Minister in one word, it will be deliverer. Just finally, Liz Truss walked out onto stage today to the 90s classic Moving On Up. Now, the man behind that, Mike Bickering, has tweeted, apparently we can't stop Truss walking out to our song. So sad it got used by this shower of a government. Labour used it with permission in the 90s. I don't want my song being a soundtrack to lies. Well, I'm not on Twitter, so I'll have to take your word for what, um, what you say was reported on it there, Krishnan. But as far as I'm concerned, I've set out, this is a prime minister you can trust. This is a prime minister who understands the country she governs. This is a prime minister who has a clear understanding of the challenges and the hopes and fears that ordinary people up and down this country, me, you, my constituents, my colleagues' constituents, are all feeling at the moment. She has a plan to address those concerns and those issues, and she will deliver on it. Edward Agar, thank you very much. Thanks, Krishnan.